It's the playground of the rich and mega rich. A place where for more than 200 years, America's elite have sought sanctuary. The Greenbrier, nestled in the hills of West Virginia, is quite simply one of America's grandest places. For generations, more than half the population of the hamlet of White Sulphur Springs worked there. But many suspected there was something more going on. They never talked about it. It was just one of those things that just nobody ever talked about. It was so concealed, we never knew what it was either. The Greenbrier was the cover for one of the best kept secrets of the Cold War. We're going into the fallout shelter where the legislative branch of government would reassemble in the event of a war. Fritz Bugis swore an oath never to reveal what was behind the mysterious door on the hill. But with the bunkers decommissioning, he can now reveal all. Well, how heavy is this door? This is a 25 ton blast door. Do you want to help me open it? 25 tons, it fills it. It's 10 feet high, yeah. 12 feet wide, 18 inches thick, and it's made alternately of concrete and steel from top to bottom. How do you stop it? Nothing prepares a visitor for what's in store. Like a scene from a 1960s Cold War movie, a 120 metre long tunnel is revealed, leading back under the hotel and back to another time. To avoid suspicion, the bunker was constructed at the same time as a new wing of the resort. The year was 1958. Eisenhower was president and times were good. But America was living under a nuclear shadow. The country feared Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev. Doomsday paranoia was a part of the American psyche. Even children were schooled in survival techniques, such as they were. We must be ready every day, all the time, to do the right thing if the atomic bomb explodes. Duck and cover! A career intelligence agent Fritz Bugis was the project manager of this top secret operation. A cover was needed, so he and his 15 employees were to be TV repairmen for the Greenbrier. But the company was a Pentagon front. It was perfect. Uh, we were working for the federal government, in, in fact, uh, although our cover was that of a management and electronics consultant firm. In the event of a nuclear war, the newly arrived congressmen and women would be led to safety down the hill tunnel. First stop for the politicians may have been the decontamination chamber, a series of high-powered showers designed to remove nuclear fallout. Each would be assigned fatigues and then a bunk. There was room for a thousand people, politicians, their families and staff. There was one locker to be shared by four individuals the government removed its furniture last year. What's there now is a recreation, except the tissues. That's from the year 1960. So it's been here a long period of time. With so many under the strain and uncertainty of nuclear war, there was a cache of small arms for crowd control. With radioactive illness possible, an underground hospital. For those who didn't make it, a crematorium. There was a dental clinic a fully appointed kitchen and cafeteria complete with all the 1960s vinyl covered chairs all frozen in another time outside a large metal box with a lid capable of lifting five tons of rubble reveals an eight-story transmission tower that's because the bunker is also a TV studio and from this location the speaker of the house or Senate majority leader could have addressed a war-ravaged America. But to survive, they needed to be fully self-contained. So dried food was shipped in, 
enough for two months. Most ambitious of all, an underground life preservation system for the entire bunker. Downstairs was water storage and a massive power plant. Any one of these engines would generate enough power to run seven city blocks of homes. Upstairs, contamination free oxygen, the lungs of the bunker. Ten minutes from the bunker, the local airstrip was extended to accommodate jumbo jets, like Air Force One, which periodically undertook practice landings. This was the clue as to how the politicians would make the 300 kilometre journey from Washington to West Virginia in time to beat the bomb. There was a plan in effect. Let me, let me leave it at that. Fritz Bugus's cover was blown by the Washington Post in 1992. The bunker was decommissioned last year. It's now a tourist attraction for resort guests. Bunkers for the Supreme Court, the President and his Cabinet have not been compromised and exist somewhere in America. Fritz Bugus left the Defence Department and is now a consultant to the Greenbrier. I would hope that there's some sort of uh, 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 means or ways to shelter our legislative branch of government since this particular facility has been compromised. 